This tutorial is how you paint a skyline with Adobe Illustrator. Alright, so your essential question for this project is how can the shape selection, direct selection, eyedroppers, and zoom tools all help you make a city skyline? So what you're going to do, you should already have a city selected. And you should all have your layers open. Alright, so you can see here I am doing the city of Phoenix. And you get your city selection, or you should have, from your skyline folder, which should be on your desktop. Now, <clears throat> how are we going to go about drawing this? You're going to use your basic shape tools, your selection tool, your direct selection tool, the add anchor point, delete anchor point, your zoom tool, your eyedropper tool, your gradient tool, all to make these buildings. And you're going to work from front to back. And what that means is this. You're not going to make the backgrounds of a building first. You're going to make the foreground of each building first. So for example, the detail. What is detail? Windows, shadows, all right? Little trees. You don't have to make every little tree. If you don't even want to make those, I'm okay with that. So I'll make this looks like a parking garage of some sort. So I'm going to go ahead and Start drawing a rectangle. Now, notice you can't see inside of it. So what you need to do is over in your toolbar, select the None button. And what happens is the color goes away. Then you're going to take your eyedrop tool and eyedrop inside of that shape to pick that exact color off of the document. Now, we're going to copy this window. Now, that's kind of the slow way to do it. The fast way to do something like that is to select all those windows and copy them like that. All right. If a shape goes over top of another shape and it's supposed to be behind it, simply right click and send to the back. Now that shape is behind, so I'll do it with this one as well. All right, so now if I take away my photograph, you'll see I have my rows of windows. So now the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to do this next area shadow right here. I'm going to count points so I know how many points to make on my polygon. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So I'm going to make a seven-sided polygon. Whoa, too big. So I'm going to go ahead and shrink that down with my selection tool. There we go. All right, so we're going to go ahead and switch the color so I can see inside. Now I'm going to use my direct selection tool and start dragging my corners where they need to be. Messed up. There we go. All right, so now there's that shadow on my building. So you're going to keep progressing with this using all the things I showed you how to add anchor points, how to delete anchor points how to rotate items, and you're going to work, from, like I said, from front to back. Another example of that is over here. You can see I made this shape of this part of the building, but I have not yet made this part. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to make a rectangle. I'm going to add some anchor points to it so it can help me make it look more like a curve.
All right, then I'm going to eye drop it. Send it to the back. Move this shape down a little bit. There we go. Now I can do the shadow part that's underneath of it. I'm going to need one. I'll just make this a rectangle again. And let me see if I can fix this now. No, I don't think I'm going to need one more point, so I'm going to take my Add Anchor Point tool. I drop it, and then I'm going to right click on it, send it to the back. Let's see how that looks. All right, so you can see here, I got a couple pieces that don't line up. I'm going to take my direct selection tool, make them line up. This one goes too high. I'm going to bring this one down. This here, I'm going to drag this like that. You do not want any of those white gaps. If you have any of those white gaps, what's going to happen is if you print this, you're going to see those white gaps. That's not going to look very good when you print it. All right, so here you go again. I have a gap right here. I don't like that gap. I take my direct selection tool and I move it up. There we go. Looks a lot better. So if I show this part of my building again, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to come in over here. I'm going to draw me a rectangle for this piece. Send it to the back. Maybe make it a little bit darker because you can tell this piece and this piece blend together. So I'm going to make this piece a little bit darker. Go. Then I have to make one over here. Now, if you notice, that one is more on an angle. Like this. All right. So I'll make it that way. That's going to be a little bit lighter. Send that to the back. There we go. All right. So this is how you're going to do your buildings. One thing I do want to mention: when you get to a smaller section of a building. For example, this building in the background here. Watch how I'm going to do this. I'm just going to make me some rectangles. Some nice dark rectangles here. Notice all I'm simply doing is stacking rectangles on top of rectangles here. There we go. So the further something is away, all right, you don't need to do detail. So the same thing over here on the side of this building. I'm just going to come in here and do this. And maybe instead of having them all one shape, I could adjust them a little bit lighter than the other. So those buildings in the background really aren't that important, all right? The important ones are the bigger buildings that stand out, okay? So I'm going to let you get started now. This is just a refresher in case you forget where I'm not here on a certain day on how to do certain things, all right? Any questions, consult the other tutorials that are in these folders, and you should have no problem doing this.